So what are clinical trials? Clinical trials are research studies that test how well a new medical approach works on people or in people. Um, they test new ways to find, prevent, and treat cancer. They also help doctors improve the quality of life for people with cancer by testing ways to manage the side effects of cancer and its treatment. So what are the types of clinical trials? There's treatment trials, which are like drugs, vaccines, um, approaches to surgery, radiation therapy, combination of treatments. For example, a treatment trial would be like the AOH 1996 um, in the last video. Um, tumor treating fields, which we talked about several videos ago. Uh, matter of fact, there's the link to AOH 1996. And there's the link to tumor treating fields. And another one would be like the immunotherapy trials that are ongoing right now. Um, then you have prevention trials. Prevention trials are studies that look at ways to prevent cancer. In most prevention trials, people who take part don't have cancer, but may be at high risk of developing cancer, or maybe they had cancer and are at high risk of developing a new cancer or a recurrence. So there's two types of prevention trials, which is action studies and agent studies. Action studies, you're asked to do something such as exercise or follow a specific diet and action. In agent studies, you're asked to take something such as a drug or a vitamin. Um, both of those are very important. And then we have screening trials. In screening trials, the goal of a cancer screening trial is to test ways to find cancer before it causes symptoms, um, when it may be easier to treat or deal with. <clears throat> An effective screening test reduces the number of people who die from cancer it's being screened for. But the the complication, we, you would think, hey, we just take a blood test and look, see if there's any cancer DNA in there. If there is, we have at it, right? And treat it and kill it and carry on. But screening tests can have a lot of harm, which includes bleeding or physical damage, um, maybe a result that shows that you have cancer when you don't. Um, when this happens, it may lead to unnecessary tests and procedures. On the other hand, results may show no signs of cancer when you actually have it. Um, sometimes screening can find cancers that would not have harmed you during your lifetime. Anyway, so researchers who conduct cancer screening studies want to know, does finding the disease earlier before people have any symptoms, does that actually work? And is it saving lives? Is one screening test better than another, is something more effective? And do the benefits of the screening test outweigh the harm? Supportive care and palliative care are near and dear to my heart and most people that have been through treatment. These trials look at ways to improve the quality of life of people who have cancer especially those who have side effects from cancer and its treatment. They may test drugs such as those that help with depression, nausea, uh, pain, different types of pain medication, what's going to work for you. Um, may test activities such as attending support group, exercise, um, or talking with counselors. And some of these trials test ways to help families and caregivers cope with their own needs as well as those of the person with cancer. Um, People who conduct these studies want to know how does cancer and its treatment affect patients and their loved ones? What can improve the comfort and quality of life for people who have cancer? So now the big thing is, is how do I find a clinical trial? Well, let's take a look at that. That's pretty important too, right? So let's see, we're gonna pull this up. So here we have clinicaltrials.gov which is a government-run government website out of the National Institute of Health and National Library of Medicine. Um, and it lists a lot of clinical trials, not just for cancer, but for other things as well. So for the first thing we're going to put in, we're going to type in throat cancer, other terms, HPV, using most of the stuff that, belong, that came up on me, right? Let's turn this up. There we go. Um, intervention or treatment. I'm leaving that blank because... If I put just like one in there, then that's all it's going to show up is just this one intervention, this one type of treatment. So I'm leaving them all listed in there. Location, search by location. I'm going to use USA. Um, I'm going to pick on this recruiting and not yet recruiting studies. Open up more filters. Uh, eligibility, male, adult. Uh, phase, I'm going to leave that open. For any phase, see what kind of see what pops up, right? So I'm starting off with a wide net. Um, study type interventional, observational, patient registry. I'm going with interventional because I'm looking for something that's going to help me with treatment. <clears throat> study results, 
I'm not worried about that. Leave that open. Study protocols, leave that open. Funder type, I'm going to leave that open so they're all included um, all the way down. And as you can see, there's lots of different categories you can put in here. So I'm going to search with this as it is. And there we go. So I've got these different things that have now popped up. Uh, reduced radiation therapy. So let's look at this one right here. So this re a study of reduced radiation therapy and standard of care chemotherapy in people with HPV positive throat cancer. This The sponsor is Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And this was updated March of 2023. Um, and they are recruiting. So there we go. Um, so that means they're actively looking for people. Um, so now we come in, we've got the study summary, a brief summary, the official title, conditions that they're looking for, HPV, throat cancer, oropharyngeal cancer, HPV. Um, this is the intervention and treatment. <clears throat> and tells you what drugs they're going to be using along with radiation therapy. So participation criteria. We're looking for people who fit this description called eligibility criteria. Inclusion. All this criteria right here. And then you've got exclusion criteria. Both of these are very important. The inclusion criteria you've got to have. The exclusion criteria you have to not have. So looking through those. Now, one of the things, this is where I would probably print this up and take this to my oncologist because some of these things I may not know, like exceptions can be made for patients with simultaneous primaries outside of the oropharynx if determined by the PI scopii, the patient can proceed with protocol activities. You know, some of these things, I, I don't know them, right? Bill Rubin, less than whatever that is. Uh, all these things, this is something your oncologist is going to know that you're not, you may not have access to this, immediate access to this, or see if you're eligible or not. So that's why I would print all of this, take it to your oncologist and ask, am I eligible for something like this? Okay, so let's go back and look again at our list. Um, study of using free cell tumor DNA testing to decide when to start um, treatment. So this is just a kind of a good tool. Gives us ten, the first ten out of thirty-one studies, right? And look through here and see which seems to be appropriate for you, right? Now there's another one <clears throat> I'm going to pull up here called Trials Today, which is TrialsToday.org. Now this is more run by. Uh, I want to back that up so we can get that because I left that. Sorry. Um, so we'll see how this runs. So trialtoday.org, kind of maybe a little bit simpler to pull up here. So I'm going to say, uh, so I've had a disease or condition and I've already tried the currently approved treatment, not working, no longer working for me. Click on that. Are you open to studies still in a very early stage? I'm picking yes because I want to see all these studies. You have to pick what's appropriate for you and what you what your thought process is here. Uh, if I say yes, am I open to studies at a very early stage? Let's click that. Let's see what no says. Um, no, I'm not. So, right? Okay, so you pick yes or no. So, I'm going to pick yes. Go through additional information, gender, age, ignore the 60. I'm not really 60 years. Okay, I really am 60 years old. We're not going to talk about it. Anyway, medical condition is throat. Cancer. That's me. Zip code. Let's use the city of New York, 10271. I'm going to put no limit because I want to see what's open all around the country. Now, this might be pretty, this might be more important for you because you may be restricted in your travel through either expense, time, work, uh, medical condition, physical condition, etc. And all of these things. So you may want to look at maybe a different limit, maybe 5, 25. I'm putting no limit because for this instance, I'm looking for everything that's open for throat cancer. And let's look. 
So this one pops up, as you can see, instead of 30 different studies, this popped up only with seven studies, five sponsors, one condition. The condensant condition is the condition of interest, HPV, throat cancer, or pharyngeal carcinoma, or pharyngeal. The sponsor is who is sponsoring the study, who is doing the study. In this one, uh, the reduction of radiation therapy is Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, web-based program and helping patients with head and neck cancer adhere to swallowing exercises and coping md anderson um i may look at i may look at that one myself here since i still have difficulty swallowing okay um therapy vectors combined with chemotherapy to treat hbv 16 um university of chicago let's look at that one so i'm gonna open this up the purpose conditions study design locations again i'm going to look at that university of chicago clinical trials intake, uh, contact email, phone number, um, back to eligibility, inclusion and exclusion criteria. It's pretty, pretty extensive, huh? More details. And what does that say? Yep. Same type thing. Contact um, locations. we got that. Notice information derived from clinical trials. So this, they, they pull their stuff basically from clinical trials. Um, and the cool thing is up here, you can print this and again, take this to your oncologist. So maybe find two or three of these that you feel like may be part of your, um, that you may be eligible for, right? Because I'm closing this down. So, and take these to your oncologist, but Lee, your, my oncologist should know about this. He should recommend, or she should recommend these clinical trials. Remember, you're not the only patient and cancer is a rapidly evolving disease with a lot of rapidly evolving treatments and they may not know everything. So doing your due diligence, remember personal responsibility here, do your due diligence. You find some cancer trials that you feel like you may be um, eligible for or that you're comfortable participating in Take these to your oncologist and ask, hey, what do you think? Give the doctor time to look through this stuff, and then they can email you or call you and say, hey, you know, I think this is this study's pretty good, and you may want to look at doing that. Or, you know, these three or four studies I don't think are you because of, and you're you're taking a hand in your own treatment. You are, as I've said before in another video, nobody takes care of you better than you, right? you have to have a little personal responsibility and start looking these things up, bring these things in, and let's find the, cl the clinical trial that's best for you. Might save your life, all right? Anyway, have a great day. We'll talk to you later. And it's the end of the year, so Merry Christmas. We'll see you guys in January. See ya.